there's the stone then from Canning Town, Bradley. Managed by Terry Lawless, trained by Darkie Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest is an international uh, super bantamweight contest of 10 three-minute rounds. Between, in the blue corner, from France, a professional record from his 26 professional contests of 18 wins, four losses and four draws, the All-African Super Bantamweight Champion, would you please welcome Boulem Belkeith. Well then, Belkeith, then I believe Mr. Goodall got the uh, statistics wrong with Belkeith, but we won't uh, worry about in that. In the red corner, we're in the Royal Brew Trunks from Canning Town from his 18 professional contest. 17 wins, one loss, ranked number one in the British Super Bantamweight division, Bradley Stone. And there's Bradley Stone. In fact, he has not lost. And Darkie Smith is making that quite plain to Mr. Gull. He's drawn one Sorry, of his 18. record is 17 wins and one draw, no losses. At the weigh-in today, Belkeith weighed eight stone, ten and a quarter pounds. Stone, eight stone, 11 pounds. The timekeeper of this contest, Mr. Ray Rice. The referee, Mr. Roy Francis. So here we go then, an international 10 round at Bradley Stone from Canning Town. This the sternest test in Bradley's career and he is the leading contender for the vacant, the inaugural British Super Bantamweight title. He should be facing Richie Wenton, I believe next month for the said championship. And a very attractive little fighter, George, isn't he? He is. He's a very aggressive little fighter. He's not boxed since he won the Eliminator in September. So he can do with the work and uh, I'm sure Bell Keith will give him plenty of work. We've seen Belkeith twice in this in British rings. Uh, he went the distance with Johnny Armour and then was stopped by that fabulous Irish prospect, Wayne McCullough. He's a tough customer. Yes, he took McCulloch five rounds in Belfast. And Bradley Stone, of course, looked so devastating, didn't he? Beating Tony Silkson in the eliminator for the Super Bantamweight title. Yes, it was, a, it was a very good performance because Sil Silkson was actually unbeaten as well and Stone took him out in three rounds. Silkson, apart from winning maybe the first round, was never in it after that once he got caught. And although Belkeith has recently won the All-African Super Bantamweight title, I think it's fair to say that his best days are behind him. Although he's only 30, that's quite old for a Super Bantam, isn't it? Yes, the little fellas tend not to last as long as the big ones. Uh, but again, I, I think he'll, he'll teach Bradley a few lessons tonight. Stone's a very good prospect, and uh, I quite fancy him to win the new title when he does meet Richie Winton. How do you feel about that yes, one? Yes, I'll go along with that, George. I'm sure Winton's got other ideas, of course. Well, Stone's deceptive because he looks about 12 years old, to be honest, doesn't he? He's a very young-looking boy, but he's certainly a tough customer from a very tough area of London, Canning Town. And he's proud to come from Canning Town as well. Why? <laughs> now, I was a, that was a private joke. <laughs> but this is a nice start, isn't it, from Bradley Stone so far. Lovely, lovely punches from both hands. Lovely little left hook there as well. He can actually box quite well as well as fight very well, so he's, he's a bit of an all-rounder. He's, he's what I'd call a box fighter, and uh, he's got quite a stiff punch on him. And it's odd, isn't it, how he doesn't take too many punches, but that face is like a beacon, isn't it, already? Yes, he marks up. Well, when I say marks up, he goes very red in the face, mm. but uh, I don't think he's, he's suffered from any cuts. No. Nice little left hook from Belkeith. So Bradley Stone can't relax fully. Oh, 
uppercut left hook from the Algerian. You can see he covers up well with his gloves. He, he takes a lot of punches on the on the on the gloves. I think we're for a pretty good little fight here, George. Although I must admit, Bel Keith looked like he wished he was somewhere else when a couple of those punches thumped home, but uh, got through the round and nice little rally towards the end as well. Yes, I felt I felt Bradley just sneaked that round. He won the first two minutes of it, but uh, Bel Keith is a good pro, and they, they they know that if they perform well in the last minute, it often catches the referee's eye. Mm, and just to uh, reiterate that Bel Keith record: 11 wins, 10 losses, four draws. And he's boxed twice for the European Featherweight Championship. Top six of his 11 wins. And Bradley Stone unbeaten in 18. One draw. That with Gary Hickman, who unfortunately is not boxing any longer. Um, I saw that fight. It was actually held at the York Hall. A very close decision. Possibly Bradley could have had that one. Round two then. And there's a very good chance that uh, Bel Keith, with his experience at a uh, high level, won't even start to get into this contest for two or three rounds, George. No, I think he's he's content to to cover up and to just respond when he needs to and let Bradley work. Oh, that's that, an old bolo punch. I haven't seen one of those for a few years. No. In fact, I landed. It was a grazing kind of punch, wasn't it? The one of the bolo sort of digs right in, doesn't it? Well, it was a favourite punch of one of my favourite fighters, a, a gentleman called Kid Gavilan, who, who was world welterweight champion in the in the 50s, and he used to produce wonderful bolo punches. Not a punch you see now, uh, which is surprising when you think uh, how many showmen or how many showman boxers there are around. They haven't got the technic technical expertise to throw it, George. It's quite a difficult punch to mask, isn't it? Well, it is, because you can leave yourself very exposed throwing it, and then Bel, Bel Keith actually didn't throw a very effective one there, did he? No. But nice to see a glimpse of it anyway. Nice little action here when they mix their punches up. Well, there's a bit of class to it, isn't it? I mean, both boxers are using the uppercut, and I always feel that's a very classy punch, because it's quite a difficult punch to throw accurately. Mm. And Bel Keith is using a, a little uppercut with his right hand inside, and, and Stone tends to throw an uppercut from outside as well. And there once is, again the bowl on that time it did land, yeah. although not with the greatest of force. Good round this. Not too much in it either, is there? No, it's tit for tat really, isn't it? Um, both responding when the other stops punching. And that very subtle little uh, block with the right glove from Bradley Stone to stop the uppercut landing. Yes. This is a very solid performance by both men at the moment. And this is the kind of fight, George, that they enjoy. Yes, I think both of them are enjoying it. I certainly am, because... Uh, they're, they're boxing very, very technically, very well in in a sort of a head-to-head -head style, isn't it? It's mm. close work. It's mm. not, it's not jabbing and moving. It's close head-to-head -head work. Absolutely, it's nice to watch. Again, you see they're both that little right uppercut Bell Keith is throwing. It's not landed many of them, but uh, it's good stuff. Good stuff, Steve. Mm. I agree, George. And uh, there doesn't look to be much in it. I'd call that one a level round tonight. I would agree with you there. Bell Keith's got a slight mark on his forehead. And uh, I tell you what, George, if this one continues the same way, I won't have any objections at all. No, I, I think Bell Keefe has got a, a slight mark on his forehead, as I was saying just at the end there. Um, and looking at his face, you can see that he's got quite a lot of scar tissue over his eyes. Now we're seeing that's the bolo punch. He just mm -hmm. grazed Stone's face there, but... Uh, 
A very, really spectacular punch, isn't it? Yes, lovely punch. So into round three then, and Bradley Stone looking to be a shade in front after two. Oh, lovely left hook there from Belkis, followed by the right hand, and Bradley's going to have to put his teeth now. And he's a very fit, strong, and uh, determined individual, Bradley Stone. And I tell you what, this is the kind of fight that will bring out the absolute best in him. But he's get caught again and hurt. Good stuff from Belkis. Yeah, Stone's really got to. He's got to grab hold of him and not try oh, and punch out. Got a right him. punch up here. And Bell Keith can do it, George. He could do. Stone is proud of the fact that he takes a punch well. He's only been hurt once, he told me, oh, in his me. career so far, but he's been hurt again tonight. Oh, and again, and uh, Bell Keith really landing with some beautiful punches. And Bradley Stone, full marks to him. He's on his feet, he's still trying to box. And counter. He's not managing to avoid many of them, Steve, which isn't a good sign. Not uh, is it? Luckily, Belkeith is not a hard puncher, I don't think. He's certainly an accurate puncher, as we can see. And might just have shot his bolt, George, or at least Bradley will be hoping he has. Yes, I think we'll see Bradley now trying to respond in kind. He needs to come back into this round with his own punches. Caught again. Again, that right uppercut caught Stone on the chin, and he's uh, he's not exactly in trouble, but he's certainly losing this round. You can see Belkey there gritting his teeth to throw these huge punches by their standards, anyway. Lovely left hook though from Stone. Belkey's legs went there, George. Yes, and he's tucking up now. Bradley's got to really come back into it. He's a he's a fighting man, and he knows that that he's hurt his man. He'll he'll come steaming back. <laughs> I thought he was. Uh, going to be a good one tonight. Very attractive fight, as I said before, Bradley Stone. Not got the tightest defence on this earth, though, has he? No, he's been caught far too often for my liking. Uh, that right hand seems to not be able to miss him, really. Every time Belkin throws it, it crunches on, on Bradley's head. And he's coming back again, but suddenly Belkeith unleashes two tremendous punches. It's going to be a war of attrition, I think, this one, Steve, because we know enough about Belkeith from his fight with Johnny Armour. And, of course, as Wayne McCulloch. And the left yeah. up there just staggering Bradley Stone. Bit of a mark under Bradley's right eye now from these lumping left hooks that uh, have been landing. Great round. Good round for Belkeith. Well, yes, he clearly won that round. Uh, he's marked on the nose and he's puffing a bit as he goes back to his corner but uh, he must be very satisfied with that he scored with some very very solid punches there and we will no doubt see them on replay now Steve well he looks fresh he looks cool and by his standards he looks in control doesn't he George yes, a replay here from that third round crunching right hand left hook all three landed solidly, and that uppercut. And four marks to Stone, as I say, to keep on his feet. Although he did wobble a few times, didn't he? Yes, certainly there. I mean, he's, he's taken every punch flush, hasn't he, really? And he did come back well, didn't he, as well? He didn't panic, though. He, he, he managed to keep, 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 keep punching back. And this is it. Anyway, we're going to come up now for round four. Really, a tremendous those, fight. In those situations, a boxer's got to got to grab and hold and give himself a chance to to clear his head, hasn't he? If you if you get involved in a punch up, you can often get caught. Certainly. Well, obviously, Darkie Smith will have had a few wise words to say to Bradley Stone in that corner, and we can see straight away he's not prepared now to stand flat. He's on his toes. Yes, he's been told use the ring. You, you've got the longer reach, you're the better boxer. Don't get involved in toe-to-toe -to -toe punch ups because uh, Bell Keith knows a little bit more inside than you do. But it's actually Bradley's nature to get involved, isn't it? A big miss there from Bell Keith. Well, he just loves fighting, Steve, doesn't he? And I'm sure he, he'll do this for a while and then he'll go steaming in again. Yes, I agree. 
Nature does have a habit of taking over, doesn't it? Well, he's a born fighter. Well, he's picking them quite nice at the moment. Yes, I'm sure if he, he boxed like this, he could Oops, handle so this fight. But uh, right there from Belkeith. He is very open to that right hand, and it is quite a crude punch, really. Lovely jab from Bradley Stone, picking the points nicely. Yes, this is what he's got to do really for the rest of the fight, isn't it, Steve? Uh, because uh, although McCulloch shot Bell Keith, uh, he's an exceptional fighter, and Bell Keith's a very tough little man. The Commonwealth champion, Johnny Arbor, wasn't able to stop him over eight rounds and had quite a struggle with him. Absolutely, and uh, well, Bradley Stone is putting himself pretty well so far. We've seen some tremendous action, and this by far the quietest round we've had, and Bell Keith making a bit of a meal of that. But this is not going to be a comfortable ride. No, it's, qu Stone. it's quietened down this round because Bradley's done the right thing and uh, tried to box. I think he's just sneaked the round by doing that. can almost feel Bradley Stone saying, I want to up the pace. Yes. Good round there for Bradley. Yeah, but but he's very sensitive. So two rounds to one in favour of Bradley Stone on our card with one even. Right, George, do you think this one's going to continue in this mould, or do you think Mr. Belkeith is going to force Bradley Stone into another punch-up? I think we'll see Bradley box for the next two rounds on the outside, and, and then I think his, nat his, his natural boxing style will come to the fore and he'll get involved in the fight again. Uh, and I'm sure that the crowd are going to enjoy it. He's, he's a good little fighter to watch, but I am a bit concerned that uh, he's, he's proved to be so easy to hit tonight. Uh, if, when he fights Nigel Wenton for the title, Wenton's actually a taller fighter than him, so um, it's going to be a very different, different proposition. So round five of the scheduled ten in the Super Bantamweight division. Bradley Stone, just a, a slick in front against Gulem Belkif of Algeria. Oh, lovely left hook and Stone hurt then. Yes, his legs definitely did a little dance. Oh, goodness me, and uh, taking some big punches now. And he's gone over. But he wants to stay there, really. There's no Stanley Couch in British boxing. Referee Roy Fox is having a very close look, but uh, Belki charging straight back in again. And then Bradley Bradley's Stone's got tagged. to grab him, that's it. Oh, uh, goodness. Gone again. Stay down, Bradley. Down stay down. Oh, and and well, referee Roy Fox has stopped it. It's all over, so Berlin Belkeith comes to London and upsets the leading contender for the British Super Bantamweight Championship. And poor old Bradley said, too brave for his own good, George. Should well, have taken a count. Yes, that's boxing. That's inexperience for you. Should have taken a longer count. The referee Roy Francis said, talk to me, Bradley. Uh, wanted some response from him. He didn't get it. He just looked at the floor, so he stopped the fight. Quite right, too. And uh, that's a very, very important win for Bell Keith and a terribly sad loss for Bradley Stone. Well, that shatters his... Watch uh, this again. Big right hand, left hook, I'm sorry. I thought it was a right hand that actually put him over. And he, he tottered back into that corner and Bell Keith, as you see, spotted that and came running in with the follow-up. And here he goes. All these punches are raining in. That left hook smack on the button and that right hand went right through him again. Eventually, he just chopped him to the ground, didn't he? Didn't he? And uh, we'll just watch the, the next 
Oh, this might actually be the same one. Scrap mile it lasted, George, wasn't it? Yes, and a, a great pity for Bradley Stone, who's a lovely boy and was obviously looking forward to his British title chance. We'll just have to see what happens now, but he's got to go back to the drawing board. Yes, but let's not take it away from Paul M. Belkeith, who really did take his chance. Well, experienced boxer, and that's what counts. Yep, OK, well, I'm sure Bradley will get over that in time, but uh, a quite a crushing loss there. We might get a word with him a little bit later, but at the moment we're going to go for a commercial break. Stay with us.